The focus of the year one lesson was on understanding difference as a form of subtraction, um, which is um, a, an area I've always really been interested in teaching and found challenging to teach um, and have really, really had to un unpick how we introduce that. In this actual series of lessons itself, it's the second lesson, we started yesterday just by talking about difference um, and we looked at um, the difference between two hats and one was pointy and one wasn't pointy and then we looked at 8 and 11 and talked about what's the difference between these two numbers and initially um, their comments were very much um, 8 is a one digit number and 11 is a two digit number, 8 is an even number, 11 is an odd number and then um, we moved them on to thinking um, about difference as difference in value. So yesterday we were doing that quite informally. They were finding pairs of numbers with a difference of two. Um, so they could talk about that, but we wanted to we want to move them towards being able to write that in a number sentence. And we felt the part part whole model was going to be the bridge to allow them to do that. Um, part of where that came from um, was that they'd been um, doing subtraction as takeaway last week using part part whole and looking at all the different number sentences they could. Um, used to represent their part, part, whole. Um, and um, some of them started to try and write two equals five subtract three because they know that they can, the equal signs a balancing expression and they can turn expressions around um, over the equal sign. So while um, lots of them can do five subtract three equals two, um, they started to want to do two equals five subtract three but just weren't really confident with that as an idea. So we wanted to get them confident with those kind of number sense by understanding it as difference. Two is equivalent to the difference between five and three. So that was the background to that lesson. The focus of the number set of working within 10 was, again, this idea of very small steps of progression. The one thing that I wanted the children to understand in that lesson was that difference is a form of subtraction. Um, and as well as subtraction meaning takeaway, it can mean difference. And I didn't want the calculating and the numbers to be a barrier to that. Um, our children do a lot of work with numbers within 10 and 20. Um, and we expect them to be fluent in those numbers. Um, and we expect them to be fluent in those number facts. Um, and we would rather invest time in getting them fluent in the number facts um, before moving them on to bigger number sets. So our expectation at the year in year one is that the children um, are fluent, and that means without counting on, um, in um, single digit subtractions which don't bridge 10, and that they will be fluent in subtractions within 10, which was essentially all of the subtractions that we put up on the chart at the end of the lesson. The children do have experience of working with larger numbers as well, um, so specifically with relation to place value and the daily count's a really good example of that. Um, they'll count up to 190 or whatever it is by the end of the school year um, and make some, some meaning from that. Um, in fact, when they get up to 100 on their daily count, um, which we saw them doing, um, they have a big 100 part and do a lot of work around the number 100. So they're really familiar, for example, with the fact that 100 is made up of 10 tens um, and it's 250s and it's written 100. Zero, zero. Um, and actually, um, we find that lots of the um, skills that they pick up um, in the lessons we're doing, they can extrapolate to larger numbers. Um, so, for example, finding a difference um, between a diff numbers with a difference of two, they might have been starting with, okay, six and four, um, but then some of them were saying, oh, well, that means 106 and 104 have got a difference of two. And that idea of same difference is actually a really sophisticated concept that lots of our children much higher up the school would understand, would, would struggle to understand. Um, so they are um, deriving, you know, they're extrapolating what they've learnt with that number sense. I think too, historically, when we've talked about working with larger numbers, we mean things like, you know, 43 adds 16 and can we do that? But I think now we're thinking about it in a different way and applying what they know with that root addition fact and subtraction fact sense um, to large numbers using unitizing. So for example, if we know that two add three is five, we know that 200 add 300 is 500, and we know that two million add three million is five million. Um, and those are the kind of incidental things that they would be talking about in their learning, but they're not going to be doing things like 43 add 26 in year one at any stage. We use the counters as a, as a representation to help the still children start generalising with their maths. Um, it's really important for them to be able to understand that 
to add together cars. We don't need to have cars. We can use a counter to represent that. And in fact, and there was an interesting conversation that occurred because when we were representing the red cars and the blue cars, most children had red and blue counters. Um, but there was a couple of tables who had red and yellow counters. Um, so there was a conversation about could we use a yellow counter to represent a blue car? And in fact, a similar conversation had come up um, earlier in the week. Um, and that um, um, ability to generalise is important in terms of helping children um, make connections as they move up through the school. You know, if they understand that um, five adds six is 11 and five cats adds six cats is 11 cats and five metres adds six metres is 11 metres, um, they can understand that, you know, five eighteenths and six eighteenths is 11 eighteenths and five groups of nine and six groups of nine is 11 groups of nine. Um, so that representation using the counter helps them to generalise um, and apply what they learn to other areas of maths. I'd had to think really hard when I was planning the lesson about how I was going to link difference to the part, part, whole model, because I knew that's a model they're really comfortable with and it represents difference really nicely. Um, but of course, the challenge for the children is um, they've often thought about five cars and three cars as the two parts and the whole being eight cars. But I wanted them to, they had to think about it in a different way. They had to think about five cars in comparison to three cars with a difference of two. Although they'd done a range of different representations, some with a cluster of five and a cluster of three, um, the representation I wanted to pull them towards was five counters with three counters underneath um, because um, then it would expose the structure of comparison and very clearly show the difference of two between the five red cars and the three blue cars. So I, I uh, let the kite out, they can represent it how they want and all of the representations they had were correct but for the teaching point I was trying to make the most useful representation was five and three underneath and that was how I kind of reeled the kite back in and, and brought them back into that representation which we then used for the rest of the lesson. In the year one lesson we were just starting to look at a sentence which will become a stem sentence for us so they're not fluent in it yet um, and that that's the idea that part part whole can tell us about difference. Um, and we will move on next lesson to, going to understand that difference is a form of subtraction because what they didn't do a lot of this lesson, in fact very little of, was starting to write um, the subtraction calculations. We just looked at that at the end and that's where we're going to move them next. So understanding that difference is a form of subtraction, that will be a stem sentence that they will say again and again and that will help them to link the understanding of difference back to the part, part, whole model, model and back to the really good understanding of subtraction that they, they already have. Um, and one of the things that t um, we're now really careful to do in year one is, is talk about subtractions. They've done a lot of taking away, um, but when they read the subtraction sign, they say it's subtraction. And when we now we will be able to make some sense of that with them. That's why we've been reading this sign as subtraction, because although it can tell us a take about takeaway, it can also tell us about difference. And hopefully that will all then link up for them. I'd pull them all back into looking at five in comparison to three and seeing the difference of two. But then I thought really carefully about the independent work that I wanted them to do on the sheet. Um, and um, by the last two questions of that, um, I'd kind of moved it to, they work in the vertical. I'd made a, a, got them thinking of a bar chart and trying to relate that to what they knew about comparison. Um, and then finally, actually, we had gone back to a mixed up cluster. I think we had nine, lady, nine spiders and three ladybirds. Um, and actually, most of the children were then able to say, ah, I'm comparing my, my spiders with my ladybirds it's nine in comparison to three and therefore my difference is six. So by really tightening in on the representation to expose the structure I hope it will allow them to understand it um, in a way that they can then apply it in any different situation. So as the children are starting their independent work, um, I've already really carefully planned and in, in, I've already got straight in my head what the difficult points are in that lesson. And so I'm kind of looking out for those and being ready to, to address them. I knew really the difficult point of that lesson that was that we were moving from thinking about combining sets, you know, 10 dogs add six cats is 16 animals, to comparing sets. So 10 dogs 
in comparison to six cats are different as four. And um, what I anticipated would happen and did with a few children was that they, um, when they were looking at that example, did 10 and six as their two parts and then combined them to make a whole of 16. Um, so coming back to um, the idea that the part part whole model tells us about comparison and we're looking for the difference um, would um, kind of help the children in starting to use the part part whole model in that way. But I'd also tried to quite carefully scaffold the question sheet so that it started with the initial representation very much looking like a part part whole. So the apples and oranges almost being directly translated into the part part whole model before I varied the representation. So they had to do a bit more thinking for themselves and how they put that in. One thing I noticed and I think I'll address next time is that lots of them almost regress back to using counting based strategies. So um, where we were looking at um, 10 um, in comparison to six and differences for quite often when I was asking them, um, how do you know the differences for? They were saying, oh, well, I can see I can count and find there's, there's four. Um, and they're, they're, they've done so much work on those addition facts. And I really wanted them to be using those addition facts and well I know that six add four is ten so it must be four um, and so I think tomorrow um, I will probably try and set up some situations that force them to use their addition facts rather than counting based strategies so maybe looking at some partly populated part part holes um, with the numbers in them already um, instead of just representing symbols where they can go back to counting in ones which is something we tried really really hard um, to move them away from this year and give them a base set of addition facts that they're absolutely fluent in.